All right, everyone. We're shooting a gun that I have not shot in a while, and it's got some dust on it. This is the Vepper 308. Uh, I bought this thing uh, maybe eight to ten years ago. Uh, I got it for like six hundred dollars. Uh, now I haven't checked the price on this, but uh, since these aren't being imported anymore, I I imagine it's uh, quite valuable. Now part of the reason why I don't shoot it, okay, is I have found it not to be very accurate, okay? Um, the groups were pretty wide the last time I shot it. Now, I've always suspected that part of the reason for the inaccuracy was this uh, the side mount that the Russians use. Because if I take this and I push down on it, I mean, I can see, just like, just with a little pressure, I can see that this moves, okay? Uh, so I, I've always suspected that the weak, the weakest link on an AK, especially one that's a, a 308, uh, that you would basically want to put a scope on, has always been that side mount that's on it. Okay. Um, so uh, this one, I have it. I have a Bushnell scopes on here. Uh, the reason why I have it is because I, ha I barely shoot it, so might as well just put something cheap on here. Um, as far as, but that wouldn't affect accuracy. I did actually manage to break uh, one of the cheaper scopes, right? The, the sheer vibration broke one of the cheapo $50 Amazon scopes, you know, what, what, like eight years ago or something like that. Um, so I remember this thing having a good deal of recoil. Uh, back then, I, I didn't, I mean, I just got into AR-10s now. So it'll be interesting to compare how this shoots compared to the AR-10 that I've been shooting uh you know, for the last couple of weeks now, right, that I've been working with, okay? So, uh, if this is a 16-inch barrel, um, and uh, it, I recall this being very loud uh, and having a decent amount of felt recoil, okay? It is a very light gun, okay? Compared to the uh, uh, to the AR-10 with the 20-inch barrel, this is a, like, feather light gun, okay? Uh, this is a very light gun compared to that, so... Yeah, that would explain why I remember this having a very loud, a very uh, big recoil, and also uh, uh, being extremely loud. The 16-inch barrel makes this loud, and that's also the reason why the AR-10 that I got right is has a 20-inch barrel because of my experience with how loud this was. Okay, uh, so let's. Oh, by the way, no magazine. We got 20-round magazines that in there okay the safety on all right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna actually shift you guys I, I was i was never i one of the things i never liked about this was this the stock that they have here i would have much preferred an m4 stock um but whatever you know um uh, very interesting nearly um when i was back in the 80s i saw this movie called commando okay uh with arnold schwarzenegger and he had this uh, really cool gun in it. Um, it had a longer 20 inch barrel. It kind of looked like this. I, I forgot what the name of the gun is, uh, but uh, I did actually look it up. And uh, it's basically a, uh, it's an AK. It, 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 I mean, it's not made, it's not a Russian made AK. It's, I think it's made by one of the Scandinavian countries. Um, but I didn't realize that I kind of had the gun that I always thought was so cool. When I when I watched that movie when I was when I was uh, I think I was in high school when that came up. So anyway, let me move you guys. Hold on. All right, I'm gonna position you guys there where I think you might be able to get a sense of the recoil in this gun. So, so I've got five rounds in there. We're gonna do a five round group. Actually, I haven't shot this gun in so long. Hold on. Let me empty this out. Oh, safe is on. Uh, let me dry fire this a couple of times because I, I don't remember what this trigger feels like. So, let me dry, so yeah, anytime you're on the, on the gun that you don't know what to expect from the trigger, uh, you want to dry fire it a couple of times. So let's do that. Let's adjust this shit a little bit. Right. Oh, let's get rid of this all together. We can do that. Yeah, this stock is, I'm basically at a height for, for an M4 stock, and this thing over here is completely different. <laughs> Yeah, very different trigger.
All right, so the other thing that's going on with this, I think this has a 4X magnification. It's a fixed 4X power. Um, and uh, yeah, we're at a slight disadvantage at magnification because the AR-10, I've been shooting that with a, uh, with a, with a 6X magnifier on it, okay? So it's got, the, it's got a duplex reticle. Uh, and what I'm doing is, uh, because the duplex, because it's got the thick lines on the outside and you got the thin lines, um, I'm actually splitting the paper target that I got down there. I'm, I'm basically splitting it in four quadrants, okay? So I want to try and get the four quadrants equally spaced on the paper, okay? So that's what I'm doing with this. Can I chamber around? Yeah, I did chamber around. All right. Let's see what happens here. I gotta tell you, with these cheaper scopes, it's not so much cheaper, but the simpler scopes, the eye relief in the eye box is not what you get with these modern scopes that we have today. So, so you would think that a fixed floor power would have an easier time working with the eye box, but nah, it's just, you know, I'm, the, the scopes that, the primary arm scopes completely kick ass compared to these older ones. This one's probably like 20 years old. AKs do not lock open on the last round. So. so um, now when I, the last time I shot this, which was a while ago, it was actually like still dust on it despite all that recoil. Yeah, I, I, I was working mostly with red dots. I don't even think I was using magnifiers back then on the red dots. Um, and uh, I mean, I can see how I'm, with the fixed four power, I'm like definitely at a disadvantage versus like the eight powers and the 10 powers and even more magnifications that I'm working with today. So I think that goes a long way as to explaining why my, why my um, accuracy has improved over the years, right? I'm, well, significantly because I'm, I'm using more magnification, uh, match grade triggers, or like like uh, like the two stage triggers and three pound triggers. Yeah, this AK trigger. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of. So you, you pick it up. Yeah, I'll show you guys. So as I go over here, right, you pick it up. Yeah, it goes travels way back. I'll show it to you guys from this side. So you put your finger there. So there's a lot of creep. And it's like, it's, you can't be like 100% sure exactly where you're going to break on it. Uh, so, so I'm working against a couple of things there. Let's go down, down range. I'll give you guys a once over. A look over. Okay, so this is the ammunition that I'm working with. Now, I've, I've, I'm the AR-10 with a, uh, basically I'm hitting one inch groups with this, with, uh, with the five shot groups uh i think it's like four out of five shots one inch inside of one inch and i did manage to get like a 0 0.75 with a on a three shot group with the palmetto ar-10 using this ammunition all right so we were shooting at 100 yards and i can tell you guys this this group is much improved from like the last time i shot this get, get in here so, um a lot of that has to let's see what we got here so the total group was four inches i never got a group that that good uh and if we follow what i've been doing with all the other guns right out of five shots i kind of call that a flyer and i look at the best uh four out of five 
and we are at two and a half. Uh, I've never shot two and a half on this rifle. Um, <clears throat> um, so I think the, the primary reason is the ammunition. Um, that Freedom Munition is really good ammo, okay? I think the last time I tested it, I shot it, I shot it with that German um, uh, M80 ball, men something, and it was grouping something like my hand, something like that, um, with that with with that German M80 ball. Okay, so this Freedom Munitions, I've been able to get like one inch groups uh, pretty consistently. Like I've got one inch groups, one, you know, a, a few times, and uh, you know, again, if we discount that and we say that's me. Um, we got like two and a half, and the other thing is, like, uh, like I said, the the I'm using a four X, so when I'm looking at it through the scope, I basically it covers up this bullseye, and with the red dots, like on the AR-10 when I'm shooting with the red dot, I'm able to put it like right underneath it, and, and you know, so I can put it, so I have like a a, a fine aiming point, even with the two M way dot, because the dot's this big, right? But because I'm putting it underneath it, I have a fine aiming point. With the duplex reticle, the line goes all the way through like this, and it, it completely the line completely covers this up. So I don't know where this bullseye is. So what I do is I take basically I split this paper into like four equal quadrants, and that's how I'm aiming this. So uh, there's a disadvantage because of the scope that I'm using uh, on this gun. Uh, so I'm sure that if I if I definitely if I if I uh, had a better scope on it. Certainly something with like, a, let's say, an ACSS scope with that with a fine chevron for an aiming point. Uh, I think that this group would uh, uh, improve significantly. Um, so uh, I can tell you guys after like like having not shot this rifle for for, very, for many years at this point uh, because I was so dissatisfied with with the groupings. Uh, it was it was mostly ammunition and his, and his thing. It was this is like. Basically, my only 308 that I had prior to getting the AR-10. This was the only 308 I have. I had, so I really had nothing to compare it to, right? So, for, so for the last like 10 years, I've just been focusing on on AR-15s for rifles. Um, so, you know, now having shot the AR-10 a lot, I kind of have like you know with 308, I kind of have like a, a frame of reference to come back to this and say, hey, let's take another look at it. Um, so yeah, with, with a better scope, we can definitely, uh, improve this accuracy a lot more. Well, now, one of my regrets, like I said, I bought this for $600. Uh, there was two versions of this Vepper. One was a 308 version, and the other version was the, uh, 762 by 54R version. Okay, they were both $600. I should have got that one too, okay? Uh, primarily because I have, like, a shit ton of, of ammunition, Right for the Mosin Nagant, because that's the same ammo that goes into the Mosin Nagant, and I don't shoot the Mosin Nagants, um, mainly because I don't like bolt action rifles that you can't even put a scope on. Um, so I so because I have so much ammunition in that caliber, I wish I had also bought this scope for you know for the puny six hundred dollars, uh, in that caliber as well. Okay, so uh, so there, there are my thoughts today. There's the 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 Vepper, the Russian Vepper 308. Hey, uh, some afterthoughts on shooting this Vepper 308. Uh, as far as the felt recall, um, I mean, yeah, it's more than the AR-10, right? Um, I can see the crosshairs lift up off the target a little bit more, uh, but it's it's still manageable. It's still manageable. It's not like like I, I'm trying to think back to my perception of what it was like, whatever, eight, ten years ago. Uh, again, back then I was mostly shooting, I was just shooting 5.56 ARs, and just kind of like, in comparison, they just seemed like a lot at the time. Um, but now that I've kind of gotten used to the AR-10, there's only a mild step up, so both the, the actual recall as far as the crosshairs lifting off the target, and also the felt recall, uh, it, it's, it's not that bad. Um, I, so again, I, I think that, uh, but in my mind, I thought that this was a lot more than it seems. Now, maybe if I shot like a hundred rounds of this back to back, you know, like you know, back to back, I would be like, okay, this is just being the shit out of me. But uh, like right now, I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's not that much. It's not much worse than an AR-10, and the AR-10 has a, a 20 inch barrel, so that's a much heavier gun. That's one of the nice things about this. It is a much lighter gun. Uh, so. Uh, so yeah, those are my afterthoughts on this.